As we read verse 34, the final verse here in chapter 6, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And so we're now really looking at the future, or what, um, how we look at the future and things to, uh, to come to, on the morrow. Okay? Um, we looked at uh, the first two points, we covered them a couple of weeks ago. First of all, the first one is the command. Take no thought. Take no thought for the morrow. That's the command. The culprit, we mentioned him or her, okay? Uh, tomorrow is personified there in verse 34, and, and we call him Mr. Worry. He's the culprit, and we studied that a couple weeks ago. Let's just sum up these real quickly, okay? Um, the command, okay? The command. Take no thought for tomorrow. You see, we said we talked about two crosses. Remember those two crosses? There's the cross in the sense of on, in the past, we're there with uh, regrets of yesterday. Some people live in yesterday. And uh, all the things they worry about or concerned or wish they had changed, all that. And then there's the, the cross, uh, worry about tomorrow. Worrying about tomorrow. And one man said, neither uh, the devil, Mr. Worry, has us there at either cross. And what we need to be, yes, in the middle, we need to be balanced. Uh, not only for the past and the present and the future, we must rely upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And the key verse that I thought was real good is Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And the idea is that our, our Heavenly Father helps us, help, has helped us yesterday, He's helping us today, and He will help us tomorrow. Okay? And so that's the first part, the command. Take no thought, okay? There are extremes uh, that we must avoid, okay? First of all, so busy living for today, uh, tomorrow is left out totally. Well, that's not biblical, and that's not balanced. Or we can be so consumed with the future, working for tomorrow, planning for tomorrow, living for tomorrow, where there's no, pla no present joy, thankfulness. Now think of that. I mean, if, if you're caught up with everything for tomorrow, and planning for tomorrow, you see, it says that God's loving kindnesses are new every morning. Or He loads up His benefits every day upon us. And so those graces, those loving kindnesses, are given to us today to be thankful for, for today. Not tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow will come, Lord willing, okay? And He'll give us grace and opportunity to rejoice and be thankful for him um, for grace there too. And so, let's not be extremists. What can I learn? Okay, first of all, from these verses, we've looked real... No, let's, let's just for a second. Remember, verses 19 through 24, if you look in your Bible, this is a quick summary. Remember, these principles, you're going to go into verses 25 to 34 with singleness of heart. Okay? Singleness of mind. Singleness of will. You see, Christians are that way. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, uh, that, that we're always going to be that way. We don't, we, we're not to waver. We're not going back and forth. No, no. With these principles, we can go into verse 25 through 34, or 33. And, and this is what we learn from verses 25 to 33. I'm not going to be like those who uh, hoard or amass riches, um, as, that, as, as, as that, that's my life, okay? You see, the meaning of life, uh, remember, I, I, I'm not to live like the heathen. I'm not to, to act like unbelief, an unbelief. Also, I'm not going to worry about what I don't have and what I don't need or, or what I want. You see, these, this is what it's all about. Why? Because our Heavenly Father knows all these things that we have need of even before we ask. The priority is given in verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. See, there, there's a place for prayer, there's a pray, place for planning, there's a place to look to the Lord for what? As we, we've seen him uh, uh, provide in the past, as we see him providing for us now, and as we see him, he's going to provide for us in, in the future. 
Now, let's look at the second part real quick, Mr. Worry. You see, why worry about tomorrow? You see, tomorrow may not come. Proverbs 27, 1 says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. But see, what happens, we listen to Mr. Worry, don't we? We listen to him. What if he conjures up, he envisions, uh, he, lets, he lets our imagination run wild, he second guesses God, all these things he brings to us today, as, and, and he loads us down and we worry, we're concerned, and uh, Mr. Worry has got us. We can't do that. What happens when we listen to him? Well, there's uh, some words. For example, one man said, he, he cripples us. It's like we become no good for today, and we don't become any good for tomorrow. We become uh, paralyzed, we become dysfunctional, we become unfit, become unfit, but also I think we're worn out, you see. We're so loaded down with current concerns and worries and anxieties that, you know, when tomorrow comes, you just, you're just I, I can't take it more, I can't take it anymore. That's when we listen to Mr. Worry. You see, uh, Mr. Worry has got us on one of these crosses, or has us push us pushes us to one of these extremes all the time. And what we have to do is we have to defeat him. How do we defeat him? Let's look at that this night. The third word here, first word was command. The Lord gives us command in verse 34. But also he gives us, he shows us the culprit, Mr. Worry. But also the word capacity. Capacity. And what do I mean by that? Look at verse 34. It says, Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Sufficient, okay? And the idea of sufficient is there's enough. Um, and, and the idea of being content, okay? In, in two ways, we're going to say it's enough, okay? Capacity for today, in a sense, negative, okay? Negative. Today we'll have enough troubles and trials and needs that we don't have to borrow some from tomorrow. Don't you think so? When we borrow it from tomorrow, that's called worry, anxiety, fretting. See, tomorrow, you know, uh, today, capacity, today's troubles are going to be sufficient. <laughs> okay? All from our Father's hand. But then there's this, this capacity for today in a positive way, okay? You see, God's grace will be sufficient for today. God's grace will be sufficient for today. Now, one of my favorite verses, and you probably, once I start reading it, you'll, you'll remember it. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but with, will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. What's that called? That's trusting God. You see, that, that is God's sufficient grace. You see, worry adds tomorrow's quota for today. I mean, think about the, the Israelites there back in the book of Exodus, you know. Uh, they, they had to make more bricks, and then the straw was taken away from them, and they had to make more bricks and more bricks, and what happened? Well, they couldn't keep up with the quota, but that didn't stop Pharaoh. And that's not, and it's not going to stop Mr. Worry, in a sense. He's going to keep on your back. Come on, come on, come on. It's not going to happen. So two things are sufficient. First of all, Negatively, today is going to have enough worries and trials and testings, okay? Don't take them from tomorrow, okay? This, the second thing is, uh, in this word capacity, you see God's grace is going to be sufficient for today. For today. Now, we try to, uh, sometimes maybe we run out of grace for today, trying to worry about tomorrow. You say, well, God's grace is infinite. No, no, but listen. See, God's grace is sufficient for today. You know, and the, and the, and the illustration is like this. You know, you know, the Israelites went out and they gathered so much manna, right? It was sufficient for today. 
Well, no, no, God's not going to provide for tomorrow, so I'll put some of that manna up in the closet. What happened? Worms came along, ate that, ate it up. No, no. The Lord said to Moses, no, no, listen. Every day you go out and you gather. Every day there will be a su sufficient amount for you. Don't store it up for tomorrow. We run out of grace today trying to worry about tomorrow. That, you, that's, that's ridiculous. You see, and then we try to store up the grace. But let me give you a verse here as we think about this. In Psalm 68, 19, the Word of God says this. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation, Selah. And the word Selah means stop and meditate. Psalm 68, 19. I like this one. I really do. But it just says, Blessed be the Lord who by weekly, two weekly, monthly, yearly. No, no. He says, who daily loadeth us with benefits. Now, you know, and, and I didn't take a chance, I, I should have took the, the opportunity to, to look up that word loadeth, but I can imagine the word, right? He just lays it on us. He lays it on us. It's sufficient, okay? And that's a good verse. Good verse to memorize. See, sufficient unto the day. Unto the day. Sufficient grace for today. Is that true? What do we sing when we sing Lamentations 3, 22 and 23? Let me give you a hint on this. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because His compassion says, great is thy faithfulness. You see? Isaiah 33, 2 says it this way. O Lord, be gracious unto us. We have waited for thee. Be thou their, be thou their arm every morning. Our salvation also in time of trouble. See, God's arm is going to be revealed every morning, especially for you, to, what, bring His grace to us. And then Ezra 3, 4 says this, They keep also the Feast of Tabernacles, as it is written, and offer the daily burnt offering by member, according to the custom, as the duty of every day required. You see, God says, you're going to have trials. That's what it says, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There are no temptations taken you, but just as common. So God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted <coughs> that you are able, but with, will with the temptation. There are going to be trials, okay? And, and you're going to have a, a daily quota of tri trials and testings, right? But it says here in Ezra, and the point is, as the duty of every day requires. You see, you're going to have a sufficient amount of trials that's negative, but see, to counter that, God is going to give you a sufficient amount of grace. Grace. To handle it. Today's strength to do today's work in order to bear today's burdens. That should be our mindset. Today's strength to do today's work in order to bear today's burdens. Now, and that, again, we're going to get to that point of extremes, you see. You know, we're going to be so tunnel vision that we just care about today, yes, no planning for tomorrow. No, that's not, that's not good either, you see. The two crosses, you see. No, no, we want to be in the middle, we want to be balanced. It's not, it, there's nothing wrong with saying, uh, go to the ant, thou slugger, and, and learn of the ant, or how he's going to prepare, okay. And we should prepare, and things like that. There's a balance, okay. But, you see, there's a difference between planning and uh, uh, saving and and then worrying and concern, be caught up, obsessed with it, things of that sort, living for it, okay? Today's strength to do today's work in order to bear to today's burdens, or like this, let tomorrow's strength do, uh, do for tomorrow's work in order to bear tomorrow's burdens. Do the work of today in its day, and then let tomorrow bring its work along 
with Lord willing. You see, that's the idea. God's grace is sufficient for each day. Don't borrow from tomorrow. You're going to have enough strength for today. Isn't that true? You're going to have enough grace for today. Uh, and and uh, the idea is that when you come to, for tomorrow, Lord, how am I going to, I'm going to start all over. I'm going to make it, Lord. And the Lord says, His, his mercies are new every morning. He loads up me daily with His benefits. And so I can start fresh and new knowing that, look, I... Going to face a whole bunch of new burdens, new trials. I don't know what the day is going to bring, but I knew, no, He has promised that He's going to give me grace sufficient. He's going to give me the way to escape that I might bear, that His name would be glorified. And that's that's what we have to. Uh, that's how we have to live. Okay, as we look to the future. The idea is mind present duty. You know. How about that saying, don't put off until tomorrow what you can do today? What happens when you put off for tomorrow? In tomorrow. And sometimes we hope that tomorrow won't come, we won't have to face the, you know, the, the music. But, no, no, the idea is that, we're, what are we doing? You see, God says, I'll give you grace and strength for today. Uh, do what's right today. Be diligent for today. And then tomorrow, okay, You'll, you'll have, you know, you'll mark off these things. I got this done now. The next thing in God's grace is going to be sufficient. How do we, how do we uh, defeat Mr. Worry? Defeat Mr. Worry. Two ways. I, 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 I term it like internal and external. Okay. Internal, in, in a quick way, don't listen to Mr. Worry. Okay. Second thing, in, inter in external, okay, we have to expect God's grace to be sufficient. We have to act in faith. Act in faith. And then the second part on this external thing is that we, there's, we need to plan ahead. So we need to seek that balance, okay? We can't be on the cross of either one, and we can't go to those extremes in the sense of, you know, I'm so busy for today, I'm not planning for tomorrow, I'm so busy for tomorrow that I, that I lose all the benefits of today, the joy, the thanksgiving, God's blessings. No, no, we can't be extremists. And so let's look at this, first of all, how to defeat Mr. Worry internally. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. So, well, you remember he says, what if? What if? And he comes up with all these possibilities. And, and you know, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. What if this happens? And, you know, all these things that, that he keeps our minds so preoccupied. Let me ask you this evening. Who do you listen to? Well, there's only two, really two things. You, either you listen to yourself, and you listen to others. Now, we realize that when you're listening to yourself, it, it should be that, you know, uh, you're being encouraged by what I, I wrote down here, the voice of Scripture. The voice of Scripture, reason, and promise. You see, you're speaking to yourself. You're talking to yourself. And I'm not talking about you talking out loud. Well, maybe you have to at home, <laughs> you know. Uh, we're not about talking about, you see, when we listen to Mr. Worry, that's the problem. Okay. You see, we're, we're, we're not to keep our minds blank. You know, we're supposed to meditate upon the Word of God. But you see, when we start listening to Mr. Worry and what ifs and adventure, there's all these other things, that trying to second guess or out guess God, you know, that, um, we're listening to, to worry, Mr. Worry. And so we have to listen to the, to the voice of reason, the voice of the Scriptures. We have to listen to, as the Holy Spirit will lead us, okay, into the Scriptures. Sometimes that's why I don't like earbuds, you know. Some people like to have, I'm not totally against earbuds, but the idea is that you've got to always have the radio on, the TV on, the internet on. You, you can't be silent. You can't have some quiet time. But dear ones, that's when God speaks to you. That's when you exercise your mind. Not just to put it, you know, I'm going to tune into this station and I'm just going to be tuned in. And yeah, I, but it's, it's, you're almost oblivious. You're, you're almost unaware of everything else around you. And a lot of people like to stay in that state. Okay? But see, no, no, no. What happens when you wake up in the middle of the night? You know, young people, I don't have that problem. You wake up in the middle of the night, and what starts going through your head? I 
going to pay this bill? Why is this happening? How did I do here? You know, and then I started realizing that, you know, I, I, start, I start praying. I started asking the Lord. I started, started thinking about scripture. I started, you know, and, and, uh, but you see, I had to start talking to myself. So look at Psalm 42, 10 through 11. And then Psalm 43, 5. But first of all, Psalm 42, 10 and 11. As with a sword in my bones, my enemies reproach me. Well, they say daily unto me, where is thy God? Anybody ever say that? We're going to see a couple other places. The same kind of question. See, uh, this idea of who do you listen to? See, your, your, yourself can say, where is God? And then other people can say, where is your God? Where is, where is help from God? You know, nobody's going to help you. There's no good for anybody, you know, from, from anybody. God's not going to help you. But here, uh, the psalmist says, where, this is, uh, the enemies are saying, where is thy God? And then he says to himself, verse 11, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, for is, who is the help of my countenance and my God. Notice that. He's the help of my countenance. And so the psalmist is saying, what? So why are you cast down? You see, uh, remember the promises? Remember what God has done for you? Remember what God has done for you in the past? Remember what God is doing for you today? Remember what God is going to, you know, what is God going to do for me tomorrow? So he speaks to himself. Psalm 43, verse 5, same thing. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted with me? Hope in God... For I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. Notice it. You see, how do you get healthy? How do you get healed, in a sense, of worry? You see, he's the health of my countenance. I mean, I go into his presence. I go into his word. I pray to him. And what does, he cheers me up. He strengthens me. He speaks to me. And then I, I have to say to myself, you know, hope in God. Don't listen to Mr. Worry. <coughs> see, that's when uh, you talk to yourself. But see, look, if you would, in Psalm 3, 1 through 4, in Psalm 4, verse 6. When others say things to you. Psalm 3, 1 through 4. These have been, uh, Psalm 3 and 4, I've been, uh, I've been meditating and reading over and over for months now. Ever since I got that fine. These are verses that have been helping me. Okay? Verse, uh, Psalm 3, verse 1, it says, notice it says there, a psalm of David when he fled from Absalom, Absalom his son. You studied that. So that, this is a pretty serious time for David. So, uh, verse 1, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that raise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Have you been there? People telling you that God's not going to help you. You're just wasting your time. Sounds like more mis like Mr. Worry. And you know, sure the devil will bring good friends into your pathway, right? Other Christians sometimes, you know. You know, it's just like, you know, uh, welcome to my misery. Well, uh, you're, you know, like Job's friends. They weren't, they weren't no encouragement to Job. Okay? And so here it says, uh, uh, it says, uh, Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God, Selah. Again, Selah means stop, rest, meditate. Think about it, okay? But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. Look at that. The lifter up of my head. <clears throat> it says, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy ear, Selah. And then go to Psalm 4, verse 6. Psalm 4, verse 6. Again, other people are saying, you see, Satan's going to use other people for sure to discourage you, to get you to worry, to be concerned, not trust God, not have faith. You see, it says there in Psalm 4, verse 6, there be many that say, who will show us any good? And the answer is, Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Really, isn't it? That's not just revival. 
That's, that's what we hope every morning. That's what we hope every... That's as we come to church. Yeah? You see, Lord, lift up the light of thy countenance. In thy light we shall see light. And, and, and Mr. Worry will flee. And, and your presence, and, and your presence are going to be the health of my countenance. I'm going to be cheerful. I'm going to be glad. Because I'm, I'm, I'm communing with you. And you're saying to me, Tom, don't worry about it. I got it. I took care of it. I'll take care of it. I made it. My arm's got too short. I can handle it. Trust me, Tom. Don't, don't run around with like a chicken with your head cut off. No, no. Stop, Tom. And so, you see, who do you listen to? Who do you listen to? You see, you're going to listen to yourself. And this to worry is going to give you enough to worry about, right? But you see, you have to go to the Scriptures and start saying, No, no, no. I'm going to listen to the Scriptures. I'm going to listen to the promises of God. I'm going to listen to the Holy Spirit as He leads me to the Scriptures. But I'm going, to, I'm going to trust in God. I'm going to hope in God. Okay? And then when others come along and say, Well, there's no help from God. Uh, there's no good. You, 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 no, no. You just say, No, no. He's a, he, he is my shield. He is a shield. He, he is my glory. He is the lifter up of my head. That's what I want. Okay? So the first thing, you got to make it, who do you listen to? If you're just listening to Mr. Worry, you're going to go to an early grave. There's something worse than going to an early grave. You're living in unbelief. You're dishonoring the Lord. That's pretty serious. But we don't have to be there. We don't have to go there. Second thing I want to hear, put down for about defeating Mr. Mr. Worry, is that we have to remember past deliverances. We must remember, we must recall past deliverance. That's that uh, Hebrews 13, 8, remember I said, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay? The Lord doesn't change. You know, it says, therefore the sons of Jacob are not consumed. You see, uh, God has helped us, our Heavenly Father helped us in the past, He's helped us in the future, and He's going to help us, I mean, He helped us in the present, He's going to help us in the future. <coughs> and, and I can look back at, uh, wow, many, many times that I was, you know, in, in a difficult situation. Uh, you know, being a uh, <laughs> like uh, what was it? it was basically telling me, I was uh, in, my, in my church in Ohio basically uh, the whole church broke fellowship with me they didn't discipline me they were saying that I was trying to split the church they wouldn't discipline they wouldn't bring me before the church they just ignored me good brothers I love them now I mean I, I still love them I, 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 we, 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 uh, uh, we talk, we, we fellowship together again, but it was, see, there were some issues in the church. I was there to be a, like an a under-shepherd, associate pastor. I was working through my other pastor, uh, my, my pastor, to go out as a missionary, a church planner. But as I got there, and, and as things developed, everything was just, it was pretty rotten. And so it was just like, one day it says, I can't, I can't fellowship with you. I'm removing my fellowship. I'm removing my membership. And the church didn't discipline me. The church didn't do anything. They, they, they have no, it wasn't that I was trying to split the church. You see, they just, I didn't exist. I lived right next to, like the house over there that's for sale. I lived right next to the church. And how I say all these things, because God enabled me, wrought and worked in my heart to, 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 to not go down. Don't, don't go down the tubes. Don't go under. Uh, he gave me grace to, to forgive and forget and to work on and to reestablish friendships with these brethren, okay? And, uh, and so, but the thing is, I, I can recall past deliverance, can't you? And that's not the first one. There's other things that, you know, you can say the same thing. Well, God has helped me here. God has helped me there. God has helped me all along. And that's, that's what we need to to know. And uh, we got to remember that. Look at, at we're going to look at Psalm 61 and then Psalm 72, 77, what we read this evening. But look at Psalm 61, 1 through 4. Psalm 61, 1 through 4. Psalm 61, verse 4, verse 1. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. 
From the end of the earth will I triumph thee, with my heart, when my heart is overwhelmed. See, that's why I mentioned that thing about in Ohio. You see, I was overwhelmed. I, I didn't know what to do. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for thou hast been a shelter for me, and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings, she lies. And he says, he says, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. You see, and I want you to see something here, just a side note here. Do you see how often, uh, how many psalms am I reading and mentioning? Do you live in the book of Psalms? I do. A lot of other books too, but I'm just saying. Uh, you know, I got my little New Testament, and, and uh, I just love, you know, during the prayer time, that's what I'm doing. I'm going from one psalm to another psalm that I'm thinking about. Lord, this, these words fit my word. I can't say it any better than this. This is my heart right now. I need this, Lord. I'm, I'm, and the psalmist voiced it. And the psalmist says, God, you heard my prayer. So you he can hear my prayer. So turn, if you would, to Psalm 77. We read that, and I, I hope you, as you were reading through, um, again, uh, verse 2, it says, In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. But the idea in verse 3, I remembered God and was troubled, okay? I'm, I'm not sure, you know, he says, I, I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed, okay? But, but notice also, it says there, in verse 6, I call to remembrance my song in the night, I commune with my own heart, and my spirit made diligent search. And what's his problem? Verse 7, Will the Lord cast off forever? And will he be favorable no more? Who's he listening to? Is his mercy clean gone forever? Does his promise fail forevermore? Uh, hath God forgotten? Now, can you imagine saying this to the Lord? Lord, you've forgotten how to be gracious. He said, well, that's pretty bold. But isn't that sometimes we think? I think sometimes we need, you know, the, the uh, now Hosea, it says, come with words. Come with arguments. Uh, we're not being presumptuous and we're not being reproachful. Just it's like, Lord, uh, is your vows of compassion dried up? Have you stopped knowing how to be merciful? And, and the answer is no. He, he's always merciful. He's going to be gracious, but he, he's seeing the trouble of my heart. And I'm going to him. And I'm remembering. Okay? See, this, this psalmist here, Asaph, is, is listening to Mr. Worry. He's looking at the circumstances. The providential circumstance, the judgment of God upon Israel. and But he says, uh, verse 9, hath God forgotten? Then in verse 10, that's what it says. And I said, this is my infirmity. I mean, this is the way it is. But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. Verse 11, I will remember the works of the Lord. I will remember the wonders of, of old. I will meditate also on the works and talk of thy doings. You see, he... he, he for a moment, it seems like Mr. Worry has him in a headlock and he's going down for the count. And then all of a sudden, he says, that's my infirmity, but I'm going to remember. Late at night, when you're worrying, concerned, you start remembering, well, God delivered me last time. Won't he deliver me this time? He showed grace last time. His grace was sufficient for that day. His mercies were new. His, his benefits loaded down on me. You see, his loving kindnesses were all there. So why are you worrying now, Tom? Why are you concerned now? And so we have to remember past deliverance. You see, he's talking to himself in questions, and that's Mr. Worry, I, I believe. But see, the solution we read, verses 10 through 15, you see, but look at verse 12 for a minute. I will meditate also on all thy works and talk of all thy doings. You see, he's going to talk of thy doings to himself and to others. Boy, God is, uh, God is faithful. God has worked out wonders. He's going to, you know, talk to other Christians. You know, uh, you know sometimes you, you don't know what your brother or sister is going through, right? Right next to you. Husband, wife, huh? 
You come into church, you say, God, man, God is really, I've been, you know, I've been in the dumps, or, you know, I've been really under this trial, and, uh, but God is really helping me. I remember what he did before, and you're just, what, talking to yourself, and you're talking to a brother or sister, just reminding them of what God has done for you, and then you just kind of help, you, like you say, the brother says, boy, you made my day. I needed to hear that. Providentially, God, Holy Spirit, used you. Used you in your infirmity. Used you, in a sense, your trial to help another brother or sister. It, it always works that way, doesn't it? What we have to do is listen. Not to just to worry. We have to listen. And we have to remember past deliverances. Look at Psalm 103, verse 2. Psalm 103, verse 2. See, what happens when you don't remember? You forget, right? Isn't that isn't in us? You know, we forget so easily. God just blesses, and then the next day, here I am, oh Lord, uh, you know, Lord, uh, what does it say? Psalm 103, verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. See that? You see, again, grace sufficient for today. Okay? When tomorrow comes, God is going to give you a whole new batch of grace. He's going to give you sufficient grace. Okay? He's going to be a show. Uh, and so, but when you're in that fire or in the trial, you, you see, you're going to have to start talking to yourself and saying, No, no, God is faithful. God is going to help me. God is good. Why art thou my soul cast down? I'm not going to listen to Mr. Worry. And I'm going to try and, and try by his grace to remember what he's done for me. What he's done for me. You see, when Mr. Worry starts talking, you just tell him to shut up. <laughs> or better yet, you can't use the S word. You can't use shut up. But you mortify the deeds of the body. That's what it is. When you're talking about mortify the deeds of the body, mortify the members of your body. You see, your tongue, your mind, you see, you, know, you, can, you can think like the old flesh, right? But Mr. Flesh, you know, the old man, you still have the mindset in a sense. You, you, can, you have to renew your mind. You have to constantly renew your mind. You've got to be in the scriptures, in the word of God, renewing your mind. So, you, first of all, you can identify Mr. Worry, right? Because he's going to come like a friend, <laughs> But also, you see, you're going to be able to mortify, put to death the old man, put to death the old mindset. You're, you see, don't think that way. Don't listen to Mr. Worry. That's internal, quickly, external. Do you expect God's grace to be sufficient? Do you expect God's grace to be sufficient? Now, when I, when I think of that, you see, it's, it's like, well, God's grace is always going to be sufficient, but do I really want God's grace? Or do I want to work it out myself? Or do, you know, it's, it's like, you know, I can handle some of this. You see, grace is humbling, isn't it? But when you say, I need God's grace, that means, you know, Lord, I can't do it without you. I, I'm nothing, Lord. Help me, Lord. And then, it's, again, that's dying to the flesh, dying to the old man. I don't like that, do you? But see, that's what we need to do. See, the flesh will quack, cry out like a, like a spoiled brat, you know. Oh, don't be so hard. Don't, you know, uh, you know, just a little bit of worry, a little concern, a little bit of anxiety. You know, you say, oh, shut up, I'm going to put you to death. See, God's grace is sufficient. Psalm 116, verse 12. Psalm 116, verse 12. <coughs> What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? Now, what, what, is, what is the psalmist saying here? What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? It's like he's just remembering all the, you know, God's grace has been sufficient. He's helped me here. He helped me there. He came through here. He came, you know, he's remembering all that God has done. And he says, what shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? Now, he, Lord, you've always been sufficient. You've always been sufficient. Psalm, I mean, Ephesians 1 3, it says, Who has blessed us? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. You see, we are blessed. We have an inheritance. 
and God's Holy Spirit, and God's eternal plans and purposes, he says that all things are going to work for good, right? His grace is sufficient. You know, sometimes we think the, the, the Lord is, uh, the Lord is never late, and He's always on time, and His grace is always sufficient. He's not on our timetable. Maybe sometimes we do, well, that's the problem. No, no, no. He, he, it's His grace, His timetable. See, as we think about expecting God's grace to be sufficient, you see, that's going to have changed your life, isn't it? Shouldn't it change your life? You see, you're going to have to think in faith. You're going to have to act in faith. And yes, you're going to have to plan in faith. Okay? Well, Lord, how do I invest? How do I, uh, you know, plan for the future? You know, uh, you know, is, is life insurance wrong and things of that sort? Or, you know, work insurance? All these, you know, you have to ask, the, well, Lord, I, I'm going to do it by faith. It's not that, well, some people will say, well, you don't have enough faith in God. You're trusting in, in a, you know. No, I just want to be wise and, and good steward. And, uh, but you see, we've got to think in faith, we've got to act in faith, we've got to plan in faith. Second thing on this external thing, we must be content with today's cares and concerns and burdens. You say, what do you got in mind? Think of this for a minute. You must be content with today's cares and concerns and burdens. Because that, you know, that's what God is going to give you grace for. Nothing else. Okay? Worry is going to come and get you over tomorrow, next week, year down the road. What if, what if, what if, eventually, you know, what if this happens, you know. And, and no, no, we, we have to say no. We must obey God to the fullest today, leave tomorrow to take care of itself, as it too, tomorrow, is in God's hands. Walk with God one day at a time. Paul says, in, uh, with his, uh, what was his, uh, thorn in the flesh, he says, the Lord said to him in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, he said to me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. You see, walk with God one day at a time and knowing that His grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. <coughs> then, as we think about um, planning for tomorrow, let's just think about this for a minute. Remember, we don't want to be on either cross and we don't want to be extremes, okay? Tunnel vision, you know, I'm only scratching out for today. Uh, you know, you see, that's where, for example, do you want to, uh, you must think about, well, I'm in a financial crisis or a finances, financial need. You see, I still have to give my time. I still have to give my, whatever you have promised to the Lord. You see, well, uh, but the, the idea is that, that you are giving, believing God is going to bless you. God is going to take care of you. You haven't neglected the house of God. You haven't neglected the ministry. You see, and you're still looking to do it joyfully, okay? Uh, planning for tomorrow, okay? And this is not a contradiction. You think about it. Is it wrong to prepare? Is it wrong to save? Is it wrong to plan for the future? We, 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 uh, you know, it's not, okay? It's not wrong. But you see, it becomes wrong when we worry about it, we're concerned about it, we're consumed with it, okay? It becomes our life again, where the Lord says, don't be like the heathen, don't be faithless, okay? He says, take no thought. Okay, that was the command. It doesn't mean don't plan, or don't think. Okay? Uh, you see, the, the command is take no thought against worry, against anxiety. Take no thought doesn't mean don't plan or don't think. You say, well, if you're there in, uh, you know, we've, we've studied out Matthew chapter 6, and, you know, you can say, well, the birds and the fowls of the air, they don't, they don't, but so they don't, they don't do all that work. Why should I plan for tomorrow? You see, we must have proper thought, proper thought in the use of the means of grace. See, we're talking about externals, okay? 
You see, God's grace is sufficient. Okay? Now, we must use the proper means of grace. We must remember our duty, our responsibility to work. Now, think of that for a minute. You say, that's not uh, mind-blowing or, or some, you know, flash of revelation, you see. But listen for a minute. As you, as you do plan for tomorrow, okay, and you discern whether it's Mr. Worry talking to you, but as you seek the Lord in planning for tomorrow, you see, do what is right and reasonable, but do not let such pursuits dominate your life or become what I live for or what defines your life, okay? Now, this is who am I, or why am I here? Well, it's, it's for work, it's for possessions, it's for the new car, it's for the new house, it's for the education, it's for this, for this. The, you know, what the, the heathen Gentiles are living for. No, no, singleness of heart, singleness of mind, singleness of will, what? We're, we're not, you know, we're, man is not our God, we're not trying to serve two masters, okay? Uh, we're, 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 what, storing treasure in heaven, we're investing in heaven, that's the primary goal, that's the primary uh, work that we're doing, and, and while we're waiting for the Lord to return, what? It's okay to plan. You see, we cannot be obsessed, uh, uh, obsessed by the problem. Mr. Worry will take care of it. You know, that's what happens. You see, we become crippling, or we cripple, cripple ourselves to handle tomorrow in the strength and power of His grace. This, you know, we're no good for it. Because we're, we're just crippled today, and tomorrow's not... We won't be able to plan in faith. We won't be able to say, well, what do you want us to do, Lord? How do you want to invest? What, do, you know, what, what about the future? <coughs> you see, there's uh, necessary affairs must not become my life. What I live for. Remember the principles and priorities and pursuits. You know, no, it can't be, become my life. Okay? Now... <coughs> We can't be so busy living for the future that no, that when we fail to live for the present, and so busy trying to provide for the needs of tomorrow that the needs of for today are neglected. You see, uh, we we have to believe that God's grace is sufficient for what today and tomorrow, and then we have to sit down and say, okay, Lord, how do you want me to work this out? Let me let me jump to the, this this one section here. Um, in, in, in what I'm, I'm just summing all this for a sense of the external, you see, just be persuaded in your own heart and mind, according to the measure of faith, how will I maintain this balance? Okay? The scriptures say that I ought to take care of my children. I ought to lay up stuff for my children. 2 Corinthians 12, 14. The scriptures say that a, a man that doesn't take care of his family, especially, let's say, his, his mother, okay, as a widow, has denied the faith. You see, I'm supposed to take care of my parents, or I'm supposed to, you know, that's part, and so how are you going to do that? Well, see, you have to be pro fully persuaded, Lord, how do I maintain this balance, okay? In the sense that, that I'm not uh, just stuck in today, and I'm not stuck in the future, but I'm trying to say, okay, Lord, until you come, until you come, your grace is sufficient, and I'm going to work to do what is necessary. I'm going to work to do all the means of grace that you might bless me, strengthen me, encourage me, direct me. Okay? Let's close it like this, and I'll give you this example. Principal, principles, okay? <coughs> what do we need here this, this evening is that the Lord says, O ye of little faith. O ye of little faith. Is God's grace sufficient? Okay? When you remember God's past dealings with you, has He been faithful? When you talk to yourself and you're arguing with Mr. Worry, I hope that you're going through the scriptures and say, God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. Why art thou cast down? Don't listen to Mr. Worry. And so, but this aspect, faith does not work automatically, does it? You have to apply it. You, in a sense, you have to work it up. It doesn't grow automatically. 
You see, you talk to Mr. F you you talk to Mr. Faith so he can uh, win out over Mr. Worry. And I'm not saying this is like a uh, like a, a doggy you know two split personality type. No, no, I'm just saying. You see, you have to go to the Word of God. You have to believe God's Word. You have to believe that God's grace is sufficient. And then you have to act like it. You have to live like it. That God does and will and has supplied every need. And so as you look at the present, you say, okay, this is what the Lord's doing. Okay, how do I apply it to the future? Well, it's going to still be by faith. Your faith does not grow mechanically. You have to attend to it. That means you have to get in the Word. And when the trials come, and the testings come, and all these things and worries come, and you think about planning for the future, you know, you seek out those that have wisdom, those that can give you counsel, and, and you go for that. George Mueller said this, where faith begins, anxiety ends. When anxiety begins, faith ends. George Mueller. Who was George Mueller? Well, he was, he was in Bristol, right? Uh, England. He, uh, God put upon his heart these, these uh, orphanages. If you want a book to read, read George Mueller. I got, some, I got a couple of his biographies. I got some of his, even one of his first editions of of the orphanage. It's great. Unbelievable. It is unbelievable how God provided for the orphanages. And uh, the car, you know, Timmy and Jim, John, as they tell me about how the car burns down and they, they eat milk for the day and, 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 and Mueller is praying and, and someone knocks on the door and they say, here, this milk, we need to give it away because it's no good because the car broke down here. And, and it's just, that's how it is. That's how, you see, it, it was very special. You say, well, is that how God could have bribed for me? But no, no. First of all, it's by faith. With Where faith begins, anxiety ends. Where anxiety begins, faith ends. Okay? Refuse anxious thoughts. Mortify Mr. Worry and his thoughts. Put it to death. Cast down every imagination. Think upon these things. Think upon the faithfulness of God, the sufficiency of His grace. And then what? You go, and for today and tomorrow, God will give you grace. Say, no, I'm not going to worry about tomorrow. I'm going to trust God, and I'm going to be responsible, and I'm going to seek to please God in all my duty. Either way, by work or by gift from another, the need is going to be supplied. Now, by work, you know, sometimes you think of, uh, you know, by gift, you see, Mueller, okay, God miraculously, and that's why I said miraculously provided for the orphanages in George Mueller through those years. It's unbelievable. Has God miraculously provided for you at times? Oh, where, where does money go? Where, where does money come from? Where, where, where's this gift came? You know, how did the people, how did brothers do that? You know, who told the brothers that I need a gift? Or, you know, uh, there's been hundreds and hundreds of times, honestly. And you, you can say it in your own life, I believe. If you think about it. But you see, but also, for years working, going out, having good health, having a job, the ability to, do, to work, and God working that, you know, providing for my family. You see, whether it's by gift or by work, God is still providing and supplying the need. Isn't he? There's no worry. Don't worry. And as you cast down these anxious thoughts, as you say no to Mr. Worry, as you talk to yourself, as you remember about these things that God has done, and as you get busy about doing what you're supposed to be doing, right? Means of grace, work, duty. Be joyous. Be rejoicing. Be a praising Christian. Remember, you see, if you live in the future, you see, you miss out on using God's grace for today. The benefits, the loving kindnesses for today. You see, God blesses you for today. And then you thank Him, you praise Him. You can't thank Him and praise Him and exalt Him when you're just worrying and fretting. And your mind is always on those things for tomorrow, can you? You miss out on thanking Him. 
And so for today, be joyous, be rejoicing, praising Christian. And in closing, two verses. I think it sums it up as we think about uh, when the Lord says, Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. That's the command. Now again, we're not saying that you were not to plan. He's not saying that. He's saying think. But as you plan, remember God's grace is sufficient. Okay, God will give you wisdom. But don't set your heart on uncertain riches, right? That's what Timothy says, 1 Timothy 6. James says the same thing. Don't set your heart, don't trust, don't put your trust on uncertain riches. You see, uh, you know, if I listen to any of the newscasts and any of the what people are saying, you know, 2013 <coughs> is going to be the end of the world in economics. Okay? <laughs> I mean, if I listen to, if I, if I, you know, that's why Pastor Tim sent me this email from uh, uh, the dear brother in, in Jerusalem. You know, we're only getting half the story of what's going on there in Syria and uh, Iran and what's going on. Okay, well, he says, I'm there, right there, in, in, on the, you know, like the battlefront, this guy, this brother, and, and he says, and, and I say, I really don't want to know. <laughs> okay, and because it's not good. Is it War three? I don't know. Is it Armageddon? I don't know. But you see, uh, I have to deal with today and I have to plan for tomorrow, okay? And I need wisdom, I need grace, I need strength, okay? And uh, so these two verses, Philippians 4, 6, what does it say there? Be careful for nothing. <coughs> Be anxious for nothing. <coughs> but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. You see, there, that's for today. And you can say that's for tomorrow also, right? But also Philippians 4.19. Philippians 4.19 says this. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You see, that covers today, it covers tomorrow, it covers every aspect. And so when the Lord says, take no thought, therefore, for the moral. That's the command. For the moral shall take thought for the things of itself. That's Mr. Worry, okay? But it says, sufficient unto today is evil. Tomorrow is going to have a brand new batch of worries, in a sense, concerns, trials, testings, burdens. And how are you going to face tomorrow? you got to wait till tomorrow comes. Okay? In one way. You see, we have to defeat Mr. Worry. Okay? We can't let him get us into the future worrying about these things, concerned about these things, and then we become no good for today. Grace is sufficient for today, and there's sufficient wisdom for tomorrow, isn't there? You see, everything is in his hands. Think of that for a minute. Everything is in his hands. Everything comes from his hands. And everything is going to be for His glory and for His honor. And dear ones, for your good. For your good. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. I hope you uh, learned some things tonight that as Mr. Worry does come knocking at your door, that you put him to flight. And you'll talk to yourself here and says, encourage yourself in the Lord from the Scriptures. Okay? And then you're going to sit down you know, and remember what God has done for you. And then say, okay, I'm going to get busy working. And through that working and the means of grace, I'm going to do it for His glory and honor. And God is going to bless me. My Heavenly Father is going to bless me. He's going to, yes, try me. He's going to, uh, you know, purify me. He's going to child train me. Yes, all these things. But dear ones, we have to realize that His grace is going to be sufficient. By faith, we have to trust Him. Comes down to that. By faith, we have to trust Him. And look at Abraham, look at the psalmist, look at David, look at all the saints of God. The main thing is that he, they trusted Him. They trusted God. And God would provide in His time. We must do the same. Let's pray.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercy to us. We thank you, Father, that your grace is sufficient. And Lord, we know that none of us know what tomorrow will bring. But that should not uh, make us irresponsible or idle. But Lord, to, to be diligent and uh, Lord, uh, planning in a sense for the future, but also looking for your coming. It could be tonight. We think of all the things that are going on in the world and, and the hearts, uh, men's hearts failing for fear. I think of the verse there the other day with, Lord, uh, will, will, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on this earth? And Lord, for us as Christians, uh, Lord, we listen to Mr. Worry so much. Please forgive us uh, of this unbelief. Please forgive us for distrusting you and not loving you and, and waiting on you. Uh, Lord, uh, uh, you have uh, proved us in the past. You're going to prove us today. You're going to prove us tomorrow. And Lord, we're going to find out that your grace is sufficient. Lord, may we um, remember these things that you've done for us and, and cause us to rejoice and be thankful. Rejoicing today. Thank you again that thy mercies are new every morning. Thank you for all those benefits that you load up upon us. Thank you, Lord, that as we think about these things, you're so good to us. Lord, help us now, we pray. Dismiss us in thy love, we pray. In Jesus' precious name.